After the Mario Power series of tennis games for Game Boy Advance and GameCube, the Mario Tennis series has had a bit of a rocky progression, one could say. You might think it's as simple as making a tennis simulator and sticking some Mario character models on top, but there's been a pretty decent franchise standard set for it for a little while, and meeting that standard appears to be harder than one might assume. But why is there a problem with the Mario Tennis games, and what can be done to resolve the series going forward? First things first, there was no original Mario Tennis for Wii, with the motion control enabled port of Power Tennis basically being all that was available for the system. Granted, you did have things like Wii Sports Tennis, so, you know, that was probably the main way of playing tennis for that console generation, but, you know, you get what I'm saying? There was also Wii Sports Baseball, but they made Mario Super Sluggers, so, you know, just weird that they just ported GameCube games rather than making their own Wii version. And there was no Mario Tennis for DS either, which for me is totally surprising because that could have been very interesting with the two screen functionality, but that's just an idea. The next time we'd see a new original Mario Tennis was Mario Tennis Open on Nintendo 3DS and boy was it, you know, fine, but ultimately rather middle of the road. It was a far cry from the previous handheld Mario Tennis, Power Tour, which was an expansive tennis RPG game with a cute narrative and large, charming cast of characters. This one felt more in line with a console entry, focusing more on the Mario universe of characters and differing challenge modes rather than a meaty single-player campaign. Open certainly has some cool modes, with the Galaxy Court challenges being a big highlight, one definitely can't forget the mode where you basically play through the original Super Mario Bros. game with the control of tennis. This one is really fun, and it's a shame it hasn't returned since open. However, beyond this, open has no career mode or story mode to play, meaning that it's just tournament modes to conquer and star forms to unlock. In this regard, Open has the resemblance of a home console Mario Tennis warp pipe tournament brackets and all, but without the core strengths of a handheld Mario Tennis. I suppose Nintendo and developer Camelot assumed that, this being the first Mario Tennis game to ever have online multiplayer, that it wouldn't need a story mode or traditional wellspring of single player content. No but it really could have used it and it feels barren to play through now. Especially seeing that Nintendo 3DS Online support has since been cut at time of recording, it just leaves Mario Tennis Open feeling washed out, without a sense of identity to pull back players. But if you thought Open was bland, oh boy, just wait for the next two entries. Enter Mario Tennis Ultra Smash for Wii U. Well known to be easily the very worst Mario Tennis game, Ultra Smash is as barren as barren gets. There is nothing to this game, with the central gimmick being that sometimes players get a mega mushroom and turn big, leading to them hitting the ball really hard, creating an ultra smash, as it were. If you think there's a drought of content in any Mario Tennis game, a comparison to Ultra Smash makes those games look like they are an unending gold mine of gameplay. Ultra Smash is a pathetic joke of a game, and I have a theory that it was made to be that way, as it was probably supposed to be aces, but once Nintendo pivoted their developers to the Switch, much of the work that had begun moved over to Aces, while the scraps of content they had built had to be released for the suffering Wii U as is. What is left is a middle finger of a game release, with absolutely no content to speak of beyond the most basic of local multiplayer. Ultra Smash is such a far cry from anything acceptable, let alone the golden age of Mario Tennis games from the Game Boy Advance and GameCube and things didn't get much better from there. On 3DS, we would later see Mario Sports Superstars, which is a collection of sports games packaged onto one 3DS cartridge. Thing is, even though it's fun that we got Mario Horse Racing, other than that, the game is another disappointing entry. Its version of Mario Tennis is even more lifeless than that which we find in Open, with nearly identical character animations and gameplay mechanics, but with even less depth. In Open, you could at least customize your Mii character and play in a variety of differing modes than just the standard tournament, but here, there's even less. Sure, there are some characters present here in Superstars that aren't present in Open, and vice versa, but for the most part, we can really see Camelot just phone it in when it came to this version of Tennis as well. It's arguably more bare bones than Ultra Smash, 
which is almost impressive in how terrible that is. <laughs> At least this one is a part of a collection of other sports titles in one whole package. Ultra Smash was its own release. This leads us finally to 2018 with Mario Tennis Aces, but actually, okay, wait, uh, hold on a second. Before we go to 2018, and to avoid any romanticization of the old, let's go further back to even before the Game Boy Color and Nintendo 64 Mario Tennis games, to the original NES Tennis. Yeah. Yeah, this is... This is awful. There is no proper sense of control, even after playing for a little while to try and get the hang of things. It's literally all luck involved with this one. Even for early black box NES game standards, this is... This is hilariously terrible. And Super Tennis for the Super Nintendo? Not much better. Still laughably luck-based, with such loose and unclear controls that makes it playing it feel abysmal. And the graphics are just ugly, with maybe the most putrid use of Mode 7 I've seen yet. Okay, so things can get worse than Ultra Smash. Clearly. I mean, you know, these weren't developed by Camelot, and, you know, those games were made in the 80s and 90s. Ultra Smash was made in the 2010s. You know, it's not really a fair comparison, but still, man, these games, these games do suck. Let's, let's not play these early non-Mario themed tennis games ever again. Uh, anyway, yeah, sorry, uh, back to 2018. Aces is a huge step up from the previous games mentioned in this video, and it goes to show the huge leap in success that the Switch was over the Wii U and 3DS. That being said, it's also a little content starved too in its own way. I think it's just a sign of Camelot really resting on its tennis laurels and figuring that anything better than Ultra Smash will be more than enough to satisfy fans. And you know, they're not wrong. But they could have still maybe put a bit more gameplay modes in, just maybe one or two more. Especially before its free content rollout finished in 2019, Aces felt like a modest improvement rather than the show-stopping best in franchise that it could have been. There's no doubt that Aces has the best new gameplay mechanics, visuals, and overall sense of product direction, but there's still many things lacking from that power series of tennis games. No RPG Academy storyline and very little of the many modes of play we found on Power Tennis, making Aces hard to continue to return to after the mediocre adventure mode is completed. What does that next Mario Tennis need, then? To be honest, Mario Tennis Aces doesn't need much to be truly great, it's already more than halfway there, but more than even a return to an RPG-styled story mode, a sequel to Aces needs more single-player content. It needs more challenge modes, more creative gameplay options, and a more robust online community. Aces has online tournaments, quote-unquote, but honestly, they're nothing to scoff at. And there isn't much of an online leaderboard system, so Playing ranked matches doesn't reward players as much as it should. If Nintendo supported Mario Tennis Aces like it was a Splatoon game, with online events and a consistent feed of new content to enjoy well beyond release, we'd have something truly special. A game that would put all previous entries in the franchise to shame. And yet, we have Aces. Again, Aces is good, it's no drop shot, and heck, so is Mario Tennis Open, especially back when Open had more of an active online community. I still even see fans of Open saying that it's better than Aces, but uh, yeah, I couldn't disagree more. Nonetheless, there's a difference between being good and being great, and even though Aces is often on the cusp of greatness, the modern Mario Tennis games all seem to fall short of that title. Whatever comes next, we can hope that Camelot learns from its mistakes and strives to make a Mario Tennis game that shoots far beyond the limitations of Aces. To make a tennis title that's fully replayable as well as good enough to develop and bolster an active online player base. Until then, keep charging up your zone shots as we're only getting a slice of the franchise's full potential.
Also, um, I'm not playing Mario's Tennis on Virtual Boy. I I'm just, I'm just not going to. I, th there's just no way. 